You've probably heard at least once in your life that if you want to lose fat, then do some cardio, go for a run. But is this true for type 2 diabetes? This video is going to cover the current research surrounding the best type of exercises to do in terms of fat loss, including belly fat and type 2 diabetes, and why it's so important. I'm Dr. Elise Brown, and I'm a scientist who studies how exercise can help prevent and slow the progression of type 2 diabetes. Having excess body fat alongside type 2 diabetes increases the risks of developing other health conditions and early death. Improving body composition not only reduces health risks, but it also just helps us to move better in general, which helps us to retain our independence and allows us to participate in a lot of life's activities that we enjoy. The current exercise guidelines for type 2 diabetes include a combination of aerobic exercise, which is more commonly referred to as cardio, and strength training. Now, both of these types of exercises improve risk factors in diabetes, but they have different effects on the body. Cardio helps to more efficiently deliver oxygen to various parts of the body, while strength training improves the ability of muscles, tissues, and organs to use that oxygen once it's been delivered. Strength training also has the added benefit of increasing muscle size, increasing flexibility whenever the movement is performed through a full range of motion, and also to improve balance and the ability to perform regular everyday activities like carrying groceries. Historically, cardio has been thought of as the best type of exercise for burning fat and improving glucose levels, but this might be because most of the research has focused on cardio rather than strength training. In 2021, Minucci and colleagues conducted a meta-analysis, and they found that in people with type 2 diabetes who exercise consistently for at least three months, both types of exercises independently were effective in improving weight loss, reducing belly fat, and reducing body fat percentage. Decreasing belly fat is particularly important for type 2 diabetes because increased visceral fat, which is the fat that gets stored within our organs and between our organs, is thought to be a primary driver of insulin resistance. Adipose tissue is a connective tissue that's mainly made up of stored fat. And when too much fat gets stored in the abdominal area, adipose cells start to die. When this happens, the immune system starts to produce inflammatory molecules, which causes inflammation throughout the body. It's this chronic inflammation that links obesity, heart disease, and type 2 diabetes. Please hit subscribe if you're finding this useful. In a separate meta-analysis by Igarashi and colleagues in 2023, they found that reductions in body fat were associated with reductions in A1C in people who had type 2 diabetes and they exercised consistently for at least three months. Now, this decrease in fat, they found that for every one kilogram of fat loss, which equates to 2.2 pounds, there was a reduction in A1C by 0.2%. Now, this has to be fat loss and not just weight loss. The effects weren't true whenever they looked at specific weight loss. It has to be fat. This is another reason why strength training is so important, because it helps to preserve and build muscle tissue, which is metabolically beneficial. Both cardio and strength training independently reduce A1C levels, but it seems like a combination of both may be more effective than doing cardio on its own. This might be an obvious statement, but the amount of exercise that a person does is going to influence how much fat they lose. Total exercise amount is often measured by volume, and volume often includes a combination of frequency, which is how many times per week that you exercised, duration, so that's the amount of time that you spent exercising in that session, and the intensity of that exercise. In another meta-analysis conducted in 2022 by Zoo and colleagues, they found that higher volumes of cardio and strength training were more effective than lower and medium volumes of both these types of exercises and lowering body weight. For cardio, they defined high volume as being at least 90 minutes per week. Now, the American Diabetes Association, their recommendations for aerobic training or cardio are three to seven days a week, at least 150 minutes per week done at a moderate to vigorous intensity. I would follow those recommendations to make sure that you're reaping all of the health benefits of exercise. For strength training, Zoo's study defined high volume as being at least 400 sets per week. Now I'm a little confused by this. Uh, in order to achieve 400 sets per week, one would have to do strength training seven days a week, 10 exercises, and doing six sets of each exercise for most of the exercises. That's too much. 
Now, if this was a typo in that manuscript and it meant to say 40 sets per week instead of 400 sets per week, that would make more sense and it would align more with Ishiguru's meta-analysis that found that in type 2 diabetes, you needed to do at least 21 sets per exercise session in order to uh, be the most effective in terms of reducing A1C. Um, so if you were to exercise twice a week doing at least 21 sets, that would be 42 sets, which sounds a bit more reasonable. One other part of Zoo's paper that I was a little confused about was in the discussion they defined volume as being a combination of intensity, frequency, and duration. But in their table, it looked like they defined cardio or the volume for cardio as being a combination of duration and frequency, and then volume for strength training was just sets per week. Now, if somebody wants to take a look at that paper and let me know if I'm missing something, I've got the citation in the description down below. So if you can clarify, please feel free to comment. I'm not going to leave you hanging with strength training recommendations. My research team back in 2021, we conducted a meta-analysis in people with prediabetes, and we found that there was a reduction in body fat percentage after doing strength training for at least three months. I have a link to a video that provides a detailed description of how to design your strength training program. Um, but just briefly, you want to make sure that you're doing between 10 to 15 repetitions at least two to three sets of each exercise. You should be working all major muscle groups at least three days a week. The intensity should be at least 60% of one rep max, which means that it should feel hard or very hard. And you wanna mainly use multi-joint exercises like squat, bench press, or lat pull down. As more strength training research comes out, we're finding that cardio may not be queen for fat reduction in type two diabetes. Strength training may be just as effective if the program characteristics are right. Thank you for watching.